Yeah. So when you, you well, when we're afraid, I guess the, the more afraid we are, the more weak we are. But moreover, it's it's probably not even just being afraid. It's being afraid of, of pushing. Or I guess so afraid that we can't push through something. So like I said, like if you're if you're afraid of something, you can't necessarily control that, but you can control how you respond to fear. It's just like if you're tired. Maybe you can't control the fact that your body is tired, but you can control how you respond to it. Do you stay home and rest, or do you go back to work? That one you can't control. Uh, maybe you can control whether you're tired tomorrow, if you get more rest today. But, the, co but the, the goal is to take radical control over the things that you can control. And so, think about the kinds of things that weaknesses lead to. Uh, weaknesses lead to things like, obviously, as he's pointing out here, Weaknesses lead to, to lies. What are the kinds of things that we would lie about because we were weak? And think bigger than just like, you know, I say I can bench press 300 pounds, but I'm not that strong. But to lie about it because I'm weak. Think about really the kinds of things that we lie about when we're, when we're weak. Um, weaknesses also lead to, um, we'll say, moral lapses. A moral lapse. When you, when you do something that you know is wrong, but you do it anyway because your, your, your morals are lapsing. And this can manifest in a few ways. I mean, even like, like cheating can, can manifest this way. People will cheat because they, they feel they, they lack a self-esteem. They have a weakness of self-esteem. And so it's like, oh no, I'm saying no. Like, oh my goodness, someone else has taken interest in me. And so people will cheat just because they need that to feel good about themselves. Now you see, of course, the, 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 the paradox there, the irony there is that it won't ultimately let you feel good about yourself. It'll make you feel terrible about yourself, especially if you have a conscience. And even if you don't have a conscience, you'll feel terrible about yourself because you're going to be thinking to yourself, well, if I'm cheating, that means that everybody else probably is too because especially if you think that you're better than people, if I'm doing it, everybody else is doing it too. And then that, of course, makes it damn near impossible to have a meaningful relationship with somebody because you're always going to be wondering if they're doing the same thing that you're doing or have done in the past. So, having that weakness of self-esteem can lead to, to a moral lapse. Um, it can lead us to, to say things that we don't really believe are true. We have a quote that, re that, re that uh, reflects, I don't know, sorry, we have a quote that, that reflects. Um, it causes us to say or do things we don't really agree with. And so, weakness has a way of overtaking your life. And I mean that not just in your thoughts, of course your thoughts, but also in your behavior. And then what ends up happening is afterwards, we almost have to start justifying. So, for example, last period, I didn't teach this quote. <clears throat> I was walking down the hallway, and I passed by somebody from, from, from second period. And I said, oh, hey, can you teach the class? And he's like, no way. I'm like, no, no, I need you to do it for me. And he's like, no, no, I, I can't. He goes, not with that attitude, but anyway, I'll be back in like an hour. Can you teach the class for me? And so um, I went to the, to the bathroom. So when I ended up coming back in, the dude was up here, and it was hilarious. If you, if you might know who it was, I won't tell you who it was, but some of you know, I know, I know that some of you know this person. And he was doing a scallion impression. It was hilarious. He was asking, what is the purpose of what we're doing here? And he kept going over the same kind of like, things I repeat over and over and over again. And of course, the class was, was playing along to it. Um, and it's funny, because you can start to see how you look through other people's eyes. Um, and I wonder if, if any of you have ever had somebody do an impersonation of you, an impression of you. It might be a fun thing. Ask your friends sometimes, especially like a close friend. Hey, do your best impression of me. How would you, you, know, how would you, uh, how would you do it? Someone gave me, um, I think it's on my desk, a teacher appreciation thing. And I'm looking at the picture, I'm like, it's great. She drew a picture of me. And it's me in a, in a red, which I, I, I presume is a flannel. And, it's, and he's got boots on. So I'm like, hey, that's how she sees me. And up on, the, up on the, the, the thing here is a cup of coffee and a Diet Coke. I go, oh, I can see why she would draw that. And then there's a board behind her, and she wrote, Life is Suffering on the board. I'm like, oh, good. So this is how you, how you get remembered. Um, but I wonder if you, can, if you can stand up to that kind of a thing. In other words, if you got to see how people really see you, how you would, how you would do with that. I wonder if there's enough strength in you that you could take people doing an impression of you and realizing you know, how silly we can look sometimes. Even when we're being serious, how silly we can look. 
And if we can accept that, not as a criticism, but just as a, I don't know, I guess just as a, as an understanding of this is how people see us. And then trying to see how well people see us aligns with how we see ourselves or how we're trying to, to, to come off to people. Yeah. I was thinking like if I had like one, um, thinking of someone, if I had like, let's say one pair of pants and only one pair of pants, and let's say there's something distinctive about this pair of pants. And then I asked someone to draw a picture of me, and they drew a picture of me with those pair of pants. I wonder if I'd be like, crap, people notice I only have one pair of pants. You know? And you're just wondering if people notice things about you. Or if you're, you ask someone to draw a picture of you, and they draw something like a big old nose on it. And you're like, is my nose that big? <laughs> yeah, people perceive it. But what I'm getting at here is that, that weakness has a way of, of, of shaping how we see the world and of course how we behave in the world and not usually in a, in a good way it takes it takes a strength of character to, to turn down moral lapses and it's not just cheating but any kind of a moral lapse that you could think of it takes a strength to as we're going back to what Gandhi was saying get what you think and what you you know and what you do in alignment with what you with what you believe and it takes a strength to, be, to say something even though you know it's not going to necessarily be, the, be very popular. It takes even more strength to say something from a moral perspective that you know is not only not going to be popular, but it's going to get you, it's going to get you yelled at. But I guess you can make that choice. Do you want to be someone who, who avoids getting yelled at and is willing to compromise your character to do it? Or do you want to be someone who's willing to say those things and then take the the yelling at that goes along with that. Take the suffering that goes along with that. And again, that's for everybody to decide. And that doesn't mean that you always have to say things in, in the, the angriest way possible or the most hostile way possible. We should say things as best as possible because, again, when the, we have to figure out what our, what our goal is, what our purpose is in saying or doing things. If my goal is to, is to answer a question that you're asking me to make you, to make you a better person, that I have to tell you it in such a way that you're willing to receive it and to hear it. Otherwise, it's, it's useless information. You know, if I want you to, I don't know, cut your hair, I wouldn't say something to you like, God, your hair is so ugly. Why do you keep it like that? Ugh. Hasn't that made... You're not going to be open to that. But if I said something to you to the effect of like, you look really great with, it, with, it, with a shorter haircut or something like that, you can frame it in positive ways. They're both telling the truth. They're both telling the truth. But one of them is telling the truth you know, in such a way that's going to be received. So when you're talking with people, figure out what you want to achieve, and then figure out how you can talk in such a way that is still honest, is still truthful, is not manipulative, but still accomplishes the thing that you're trying to accomplish. Um, sorry, my point to the story about, about telling you that somebody else, as a student teaching the class, was that um, after that there was a student who said, I want, to, I want to teach it. I said, okay, go for it. And so he came up and he, he was teaching it. And essentially, he was, uh, he was just saying what he thought about it, and he was saying that he disagrees with this. And he says, like, you know, if you want to get a job, for, for example, and I mean, you're going to lie because you want you know, to, to get the job, aren't you? I mean, come on, what would you do? And he was using this idea of, well, what would you do as a justification? As though, because I would do it, that that therefore means that it's right. And if you were to, to get caught, I don't know, say you get caught for a murder, whatever, would you want to go to prison? No, of course not. Probably not. Does that mean that therefore you can, you can kill somebody else because they were a witness to cover up the murder? Well, of course not. Well, come on, what would you do? You know, using, using other people as a, as a measurement for the right thing isn't necessarily the best measurement for what would be the right thing. In other words, what's popular is not necessarily what's, what's, what's best. What's expedient is not necessarily what's right. In fact, it rarely often, it rarely is. It very often is not. And so, using that idea of like, well, what would you do? And so this, um, it was actually very interesting because there was a dude in class who's a little, 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 little non-linear, I guess it is, and the student just goes after him and starts hitting him with, with Nietzsche about how, okay, so you're a member of the herd. You're the last man. You're the person who's too weak to stand up, and so therefore you have to ask other people, what would you do so that you can join the herd? And then the person also made a comment about getting into a fight, and he's like, you know, of course you're going to take all your friends with you. And the same thing, he's like, oh, okay, so I guess you admit, you're weak by yourself. 
you have to have a whole bunch of people with you because you're not strong enough to stand on your own. And, and rather than build yourself up and become strong enough, you have to go... <laughs> it, was just, it was a really funny thing to see, the, to see him go after him with this thing. But it's absolutely true. It is true. That the weaker you are, the, the less capable you are of dealing with, with reality because reality is, is harsh. Reality is, is, you know, even if you tell the truth, that doesn't mean that you're going to have a, an easy life. In fact, telling the truth can lead to a very difficult life. It probably will. Just like lying will lead to a difficult life. So maybe the lesson that we can learn from that is that life is difficult. So are you going to navigate life as a, as a liar, as a manipulator, as somebody who's trying to, to create a type of view of reality that's in contest with the objective reality of the universe? Probably going to lose that. So life is difficult. Do you want to be that person or do you want to be the person who approaches life honestly, forthrightly, as best as you possibly know the truth, present the truth, and it's going to be difficult either way. So maybe choose the things that you're willing to suffer for. Of, you know, especially even if it's just the best of a couple of bad options. Maybe. Choose the best possible option that you can. But that takes strength. But he says here, this way you can't trust weak people. And this is true. I remember, it's really funny, as this person was presenting that, that statement today, um, I was thinking, wow, I now know that I cannot trust this person. If this person were to come to me and tell me, oh, Scanlon, I, you know, my, my, my grandparents died over the weekend, can I get an extension on this stuff, blah, 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 I now know, I don't know if this person is telling the truth. This person has already told me that they're willing to lie to me so that they can, so they can get what they want out of life. And of course, this person knows how he has acknowledged being a liar, he's, he's acknowledged being weak individually, and so what does he then do? He then turns to everybody else. Come on, what would you do? Because he joins the herd. Because he's a weak person. And the only way that he can actually appear strong is by getting people to say, oh yeah, we would do the same thing. Now he feels safe in that group. Yeah. Um, in other words, it was, it was demonstrated. If I didn't know better, I would say that, that, that it, was a, it was a master class in presenting an argument in favor of this, of this quote. But I happen to know better. So... You can't trust weak people. And by the way, this person's view is everyone would do it, so therefore it's okay. I can, you know, I can lie and cheat and steal. Why? Well, because everybody else would do it. You wouldn't ask that question unless you believed everybody else was already doing it. If you're a liar, of course, you want to believe that everybody else is lying, which is what makes it difficult to form close relationships with people. You presume everybody else is lying. If you're a cheater, you believe everybody else is a cheater. And so it becomes impossible for you to form meaningful, intimate relationships with people. So, dis deception, disloyalty is their only means of survival. Yeah, yeah. I think that kind of speaks for itself. So, I'll leave it there. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?